Hello, you're welcome to part four of our series on how to perform spatial analysis of data using QGIS and SynapJet. My name is Wilfred Ngwa. I am an infectious disease epidemiologist and microbiologist. I am also the founder of EpiGuider. In part three, we ended up where we had represented our first variable, the attack rate on our map. Now that we've got a map, we need to be able to print it or to export it into a document. The reason is a QGIS map file is not an image. Rather, it saves the state of the GIS program with references to all layers, their labels, colors, and what have you. So for someone who doesn't have the data or the QGIS program, the map file will be useless. The good news is that QGIS can export its map file to a format that anyone's computer can read, as well as print out the map. Both exporting and printing is handled via the print layout. QGIS allows you to create multiple maps using the same map file. For this reason, it has a tool called the Layout Manager. To launch the Layout Manager, Go to Project then Layout Manager. QGIS opens up the Layout Manager. You can leave the default settings to Empty Layout and click on Create. QGIS asks for a print layout title. Let's call it Lesson Map 1. and click OK. QGIS now opens up our map print layout. And as you can see on the top left corner, the name of this layout is Lesson Map 1. Let's now have a quick walk through the print layout interface. The QGIS print layout interface is divided into panels and toolbars. You can right click on any of the toolbars to view the complete list of panels and toolbars. QGIS has six panels and five toolbars, which you can toggle on or off using the checkboxes. On the right side of the canvas, you find the panels divided into two sections. The upper section holds the panel's items and undo history, and the lower holds the panel's layout, items, properties, guides, and atlas. The Items panel provides a list of all the print layout items added to the canvas and ways to globally interact with them. The Undo History panel displays a history of all changes applied to the layout. With a mouse click, it is possible to undo and redo layout steps back and forth to a certain status. The Layout panel allows you to set general parameters to apply to the layout when exporting or working within. The Item Properties panel displays the properties for the selected item. The Guides panel provides you with vertical and or horizontal line references you can place on a layout page to assist you on items placement when creating, moving or resizing them. You can use the Atlas panel to automatically generate a number of maps with a common format. Let me now walk you through the toolbars and menus in the QGIS print layer. It is important to note that the menus highlighted in green contain all the features and the toolbars highlighted in yellow. The toolbars just provide your tools handy for easy access and use. We talked about the status bar, so there it is highlighted in pink. Let me describe the details of each menu one after the other. The layout menu provides actions to manage your layout. You can save the project file directly from the print layout window. You can create a new and blank print layout by clicking on the 
new layout. You can also create a new print layout by duplicating the current one. You can delete or remove the current layout. Under Layout Manager, the layouts permit you to open an existing print layout, make adjustments to layout properties, and rename the layout. You can also add pages to your existing layout. Once the layout is designed with the Save as Template, you can save the current state of a print layout session as a .qpt template. The Add Items from Template load these items again in another session or print layout. In the layout menu, there are also ways to share geographical information produced with QGIS that can be included in reports, presentations, or publications. These tools are export as image, export as PDF, and export as SVG if you have intentions of displaying your image on the web. You can also manage your page, set up settings, print, and close the current layout. The Edit menu offers tools to manipulate print layout items. It includes common actions like copy, cut, paste, undo, redo, and selection tools applied on items in the layout. The View menu gives access to navigation tools and helps to configure the general behavior of the print layout. Besides the common zoom tools, you have means to refresh your map view, used mostly when you have changes to your map on the main GIS file, or rather, the main QGIS file. The view menu also provides means to preview your map. Show grid permits you to display grid lines on your layout. These grid lines will not be displayed in your final output. Synap to grid allows you to synap items to grid lines when moving or creating them. Show guides permit you to snap items to guides when moving or creating them. Guides are red lines that you can create by clicking in the ruler above or at the left side of the layout and then dragging and dropping them to the desired location. Smart guides use other layout items as guides to dynamically snap to as you move or reshape an item. Clear guides remove all current guides on your layout. Show rulers permit you to display rulers on your layout. Show bounding boxes around layout items permit you to better identify your selection. Show pages permit you to see the pages in your layout. Panels and toolbars can be enabled from the view menu. I will advise you leave the view menu to default settings until you have practiced well enough to start making changes. The items menu helps you configure items position in the layout and the relations between them. So you can group, ungroup, raise, lower, bring to front, send to back, lock selected items, unlock all locked items, align selected items, distribute selected items or resize them. The Add Item menu contains tools to create layout items. This is one of the menus you will be using a lot. We will see the features of these items more when we start creating the layout for our exercise. The Atlas panel allows you to enable the generation of an atlas for the current layout and gives access to its parameters. We will not be using this menu in this course. In the settings menu, you can set some options that will be used as default on any new print layout. For example, layout defaults let you specify the default font to use and grid appearance allows you to set the grid style and its color. Now that we know our map print layout interface, let's put this know-how to use by creating our layout. So here we are in our print layout, which we call Lesson Map 1. The first thing you want to do is set up your page. To do so, right-click on the canvas and take Properties. As you can see, the size is set to A4 
the orientation to landscape with dimensions for the width and height. I will leave it to default settings as this is perfect for our exercise. To add our map to this layout, there are some things I like to do first. Using the guides, I mark out areas for my map, my title, my legend, and my scale. Let me show you how. The guides are these red lines you see on the rulers. To put a horizontal guide, I will click and hold here and drag. So I think this top area here is perfect for my title. To insert a vertical guide, I will click here and drag. I'll insert another one. So I want my title to take this upper part, my map to take this part, my legend to take this part. I think I need to insert another one. So my scale will take this part here. I can now move to creating my map. Now that I have my map layout mapped out, to add my map, I will go to the Add Item menu and take Add Map. My mouse cursor turns into a cross, permitting me to add my map by clicking and dragging over the mapped area. I can now adjust my selection using the squares at the sides. I can also move my map within the selection using the Move Item Content tool. I can also adjust the scale of my map using the properties. I will set it at say 700. I think I'm happy with what I see. I can now add the title. In order for your map, not to move while you're doing other things, make sure you log by checking this box here. So to add my title, I'll go to add item, add level, and I click and drag at the top. The title properties panel now opens. I can now hear type in the title of my map. I will call it Regional Distribution of COVID-19 Cases in Cameroon. I can scroll down to Appearance to adjust the font size 20. I think that is perfect. Scroll down further and I adjust the alignment to center. You can also change the font color. I will leave it to black. I think this is perfect, so I also have my title locked. The next item I would like to add is my legend. So I'll go again to add item. I go to add legend. And at this part, I'm going to draw my legend. You now see our legend here. It looks a little bit funny, but don't worry. We have the items properties panel. So the first thing I would like to do is to give a title to my legend, which I'm going to call Key. Under the legend items, I will toggle off Auto Update. I will now scroll down. I just want the figures here represented in my scale. So what is I'll do is I'll select whatever I don't want to see. And I click on the minus sign. And do same here, minus, I do same here, minus, and here I can double click to edit. And I can call this attack rate, click OK. You can now drag to adjust the scale. I think the fonts are too small, so I'll move down further. I go to fonts and text formatting. 
for the title i can set the font to 20 for the group headings i can set the font to 20 as well we'll say 25 for the subgroup headings i can set that to 20 as well i think this is perfect with our key done let us now add a scale procedure the same go to add item come to add scale bar drag and here we go we have our scale another thing i would like to add is the north arrow go to add item at north arrow and then i can click and drag for the purpose of this exercise i think our map is okay so what we want to do is to remove the grid lines we go to view the clear guides and we can also export by going to the layout menu so we go to layout we go to export as image we now scroll to our main folder on our desktop spatial data analysis we we'll go to maps and i will just leave it as lesson map one you can change the format to jpeg and you click save kojs now asks you for output options you can change to a size which you prefer but for the purpose of this exercise i will leave it to default settings and click on save kojs now tells you that your map has been successfully exported and shows you the path if we now go to our folder on the desktop and click on maps we will find our map saved there as a jpeg file so if i double click on it there we go we have our map as a jpeg file congratulations on your first map in part five we will be finalizing this course by taking our image file to snapchat stay tuned guys Remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Peace.